really looking forward to this evening and um, certainly I want to get in deeper waters than other you but I want to launch out into the deep and listen if you if you'd like to be here tonight you can't be bothered going home well let's just chill out we can just chill out here all day you can go to the Asda and get some fast food in and then we can cook up in the back then we'll get we'll all the facilities so we can just chill out so if you want to just chill out and then not go home at all then feel free to to chill out we were thinking about doing that anyway so um, and just people travel from long ways to be here, which is humbling, and um, but so glory to God, and uh, we look forward to that. So that's what's going to be taking place tonight. Also, um, we know that Emma did her um, bungee jump Ooh. yesterday. Yeah. There's a few of us there, but did you hear her one? All the ones are dedicated to raise the folk are cancer support group that we have just up the road there. It's uh, the centre runs up there. So Emma, what did you? Um, She's come up to say something, right? Okay. Well, I'm not really. Right, okay, no. well, please come up. Please. I don't know. 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 Two thousand. So, 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 so we watched we watched her diving out that cage at oh, high altitude. And uh, cool as a cucumber. And uh, she was even cool as a cucumber getting into the cage. I can't even say she was nervous. So, so she was um, she was up for that. So praise the Lord. So that's good. So we praise God for that. And um, we just thank Emma for taking the time and trouble to do that. And again, prayer meetings will be on, as always, Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Friday night, half past 6 to approximately about 8 o'clock. Although we're open for extensions as the Lord would lead. And we're also planning to put in an extra special prayer meeting. We've had a couple of 12 hour prayer meetings just over the last month or so. Um, ahead of the COP26 as it's built, we've got all this influx. The world is coming to Glasgow. Um, mm. We've certainly the movers and the shakers are coming to Glasgow for the Save the Planet, Save the Earth. And then um, I thought it would be a good opportunity to just keep moving amongst the crowds with the gospel and to be out there we just handing out tracks, sharing, sharing about the Lord. But I think it'd be good for us to pray about this as well, um, because it's not so much about saving the planet, it's about taking over the planet. That is really the, the globalist agenda. Uh, I'm all for saving the planet and doing things better and not poisoning the seas and destroying life and cutting down the trees. But the real agenda behind everything is we saving the planet is really basically it's a kind of it's a globalized agenda to take control of all of these things. Mm -hmm. So I'll be very much focusing on evangelism. For it's not about saving it's saving souls uh, that we need to be more concerned about, brothers and sisters. And let's remember that it's all about saving souls. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We can get so caught up with all the narratives mm -hmm. of everything that's going on, but our business is promoting the gospel. And seeing souls saved for the glory of God. Amen. What's going to happen? It's going to happen. It's written in the book. The Antichrist is coming. All hell is going to break loose as we move into these last days. But our job is to rescue people. Save them in this late hour. Tell them about Jesus. Share the gospel. And bring them into the kingdom of God. Amen, Norman. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I just want to focus on that as well. So uh, we're planning to have a 12-hour prayer meeting at least in here might go for a bit longer uh, I'll let you know our definitive day but we were looking at Thursday would that be Thursday the 27th um, Thursday the 27th is a good day so Thursday in here that'll be 7 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock at night you're welcome to come in in and out or amongst or you're welcome to stay for the whole time and um, that would be great as well so that's a date we'll set there and um, praise the Lord Amen I think that's all we've got the announcement just now we'll get the word Praise God, it's good to get them out the road with. Plus, also, there's a basket there. Uh, if anybody wants to give an offer, we don't sit, put the basket around. And I don't beat no one daily out you to make you feel terrible, to get you to help empty your purse and, your, and you know, put your jewellery in. It's a free will offering. And if you desire to put something in there, it helps us pay the bills, it helps us you know, do what, what it is that we do. And so, and, um, and I'm sure the Lord will bless you for that. And, um, you know, so glory to God. Hallelujah, it's good to give. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I'm going to be sharing from the book of Haggai, chapter 2, and, um, and we'll unpack the word 
this morning. Father, we just thank you again for your word. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that the breath of the Holy Spirit will come upon the word. Father, without your spirit, Lord God, Father, there's an empty gong and there's a donkey that we'll be speaking today. But Father, we pray, Lord God, that, that, Lord, that your word will go forth as a sharp double-edged sword this morning. Let it pierce into the very Father, spirit, soul, bone, marrow, Lord God, let it judge our thoughts and let it pierce our hearts, I pray, Father, mm -hmm. for the glory of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Well, just before, I just, um, I'm going to be sharing from chapter 2, um, which has really been put into my heart. But leading up just to chapter 2, we have chapter 1, of course. We read about why the Lord had brought back this remnant um, from Babylon. And great Cyrus had commissioned them to go forth. And to go back to Israel with a commission to build the temple of God in Jerusalem, which had been destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. And so now, according to the word of God, this band was remnant was sent out, probably about 50,000 approximately, decided to leave the comfort zone of Babylon and go back to this, shall we say, um, despot. It was, it was a ruined land, and there was all these other nations there, people groups. So it's a very hostile place. It wasn't the best environment to have sticks and go to. And it was going to be very difficult, but thank God there was a bunch of people willing, led by Zerubbabel and the Joshua the High Priest that came back and were commissioned to build the temple. They got off to a good start. When they came back, it was, it was difficult, but once they got themselves organized, they rolled their sleeves up. And they began to, if you like, the first thing they did was build the altar, wasn't it? So they could offer up sacrifices to the living God. So the altar was the first priority so that they could offer up praises and worship and sacrifice their sacrifices unto the Lord. Hallelujah for the glory of God. And so that was done and it was all done um, quickly. And then they put in the foundation. So then they obviously they cleared the site a little bit and they dug a new foundation for the new temple. And when that was done, there was great loud cheers. There was great excitement, as you can imagine. But then all hell broke loose. Well, all hell was breaking loose gradually anyway. Now their enemies were determined to stop this building project going ahead. And they were being harassed. They were being afflicted all the time. So much so that they even hired workers to come against them. It was a wee bit like when a blockade in Felix though and stopping the, the materials coming in um, oddly and just hindered the work, stopped everything. It was like these were professional people that came against them. And they were like bullied into submission where it was like eventually they began to just get weary with all of this and they down tools and the, and the work of God stopped. I remember last week I said, you know when, uh, let me get down here, you remember I said there when the devil will always attack and try and, and destroy something burst in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And this was commissioned by God. Whenever God is going to do a work in you or through a people group, whenever something's commissioned by God, I want to tell you this, all hell will break loose. Mm -hmm. That's why see when you get saved, Patrick, see when you get saved, you give your heart to the Lord. I want to tell you this, all hell breaks loose in your life, family troubles, health, whatever. Always find that all of a sudden, everything comes against you to try and get you to vote, to get you stopped go to church and renege on that decision you just made. So that can happen individually, it can happen in other projects that we see here as well. All of a sudden, all hell broke loose. So what they had, they eventually were certain they started building their houses in the land, and then it says they get caught up with their own houses and they forgot about the house of the Lord. It's interesting to note that the devil didn't stop their building their own houses. If you want to read the book of Haggai there, they, they were allowed to build their own houses. They were allowed to get cozy in there, but they stopped the main work. So they may have been building their own houses, but God's house was brought to a standstill. And of course, the, the Lord had a problem with that. He says, you're cozy in your own houses, but what about my house that remains a ruin? And God withheld his blessings, if you like, and God's curses started to come upon him. And everything just started to go to rack and to ruin. And why did all of this happen? Because the house, God's house, was being neglected. Listen, I've always been the prince of my life. God's house first, my house second. Mm. I want to tell you this. If you, when you put your house before God's house, you've got problems. And the biggest problem is with the church, as much as it would say anything is, because they are more concerned about their own house, my own space, are we concerned about God's space? Hallelujah. Mm. As we get into chapter 2, I'll just read a couple of verses, and hopefully some more of that will come out this morning. Let's read from 2, and we'll break it in a section. We'll read from 2, um, 1 to 9. It says, in the seventh month, on the twenty-first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, 
Who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now in comparison with it? Is this not in your own eyes like nothing? And yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Jehoshaphat, high priest. And be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord. And work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more in a little while, I will shake heaven and the earth, the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. For the silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God for his word to us this morning. I'll be down here. Thank God for the prophets. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank God for the prophetic word. I love the prophetic word. And guys, can I say as well, we are, if you like, if somebody wanted to give us a tag, a Pentecostal church. Hallelujah. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit. We believe in the body ministry. We believe not only can we all sing and praise the Lord, but we can also come and we can bring a tongue. We can bring a word of instruction. We can bring a prophetic word. Hallelujah. We can bring something to the table. I want to say to you that this is open for us to exercise this. From now on, though, when somebody wants to bring a prophetic word, it will be getting written down and we will be taking mm. note of that prophetic word, mm. which we did sometime in the past, and sometimes a word comes and a word goes, and everybody walks in and says, well, what was that word again? So it just means to say that if we're really going to take it serious, the Spirit of God wants to break in and somebody brings a word in tongues, and then we have an interpretation, and we want to know what that interpretation is, and we want to know, is, well, was that tongue from the Lord? And then we want to know, more importantly, well, was the interpretation? from the Lord and then we want to weigh that up and then we want to really believe is God speaking to us hallelujah and if he is we need to take note of that word glory to God so I'll just put that in there it's not part of the notes just sort of fling that out there because what because thank God for the prophets amen hallelujah Scotland at one time had a few prophets kicking about in our past some of them though Peden himself was very much known as a prophet of Scotland in his day and there was many others I might add and I believe that there's a few prophets kicking about. They might not be noticed, but glory to God. I pray that God will lift them up at this time. Ezra 5 and 2, to read the book of Haggai, you have to read the book of Ezra as well. And you've got a bigger picture of what's happening. Hallelujah. And it says this, Ezra 5 and 2, the latter part says, And the prophets of God were with them, helping them. Hallelujah. That's what the prophetic ministry is for. It's to build us up. It's to help us. It's to encourage us. It's great when you can get a prophetic word, guys. I, I mean, I love that when someone can just come and speak into your life. And you know it comes from the Lord. I've had a lot of other people speaking into my life. You just know it's just over the top of your head. And I've had some hellish things spoken to me as well. And, you know, and I don't believe some of them came from the Lord, although sometimes you get, it's good to get a rebuke. But other times, you know, they came straight from the pit of hell and somebody's just kind of put a spin on it and tried to prophesy it into your life. Glory to God. But thank God they were there to help. Go down here, a strong word, if it is received well, is a godsend. Do you know that word, a godsend, when something comes to you, and maybe a load of money falls through the post, oh, that was a godsend, or, you know, somebody comes and helps you. We use that expression, don't we? It's not necessarily scriptural. But I'll get down here, a strong word, if it's received well, is indeed a godsend. Thank God for a word of the Lord, a strong word or a prophetic word. Oh, that God would raise up the prophets in Scotland again. Amen. This is my prayer. And I pray that most mornings. Hallelujah. It's not that there are no prophets in Scotland, <laughs> but I believe just now God is hidden, if you like, them in caves if we go up to go back um, into the era of Elijah when he thought he was all alone. Glory to God. But I want to tell you this. Hallelujah. But what would Scotland say if a prophet came to speak to our nation today? What do you think Scotland would say? Amen? On what would they, and would they receive it would they receive it? Would Scotland receive a prophetic word that came to this nation? Hallelujah. What would the, what would the prophetic word be to this land of Scotland? Mm -hmm. And would this nation of Scotland receive the prophetic word? Listen, we read about Israel's history and many prophetic words were said to Israel and they were like that. You can know what you can do with those words. Some kings actually, when it was written out, ripped it up and threw it in the fire. 
And other people just put, put the prophets to death and say, shut up, we don't want to hear that. But would the nation receive a prophetic word if it was given? I'll just get down that way a little question mark. Hallelujah. Uh, which is always good. But then, how many sermons have been loaded with the voice of the Lord? How many sermons have been loaded? The prophetic sermons that we can sometimes have was not prophetic. Listen, sermons can be very prophetic as well. Hallelujah. How many have come that have been loaded with the voice of the Lord and it's came through a sermon? A sharp, prophetic edged word. Amen. Which was blunted by a hardened heart. This is why I put out a little kind of thing on the notice board. And I says, come prepared. Hallelujah. There might be a prophetic edge to the word. Now the reason I'm saying that is not because I am trying to build myself up anything. I do prepare when I'm going to speak. But unless you're prepared, that word's going to go in your head. Mm -hmm. Is your heart prepared to receive a word? Your heart, some of your hearts are like stone. It just bounces off them. Mm -hmm. Oh, good word, root them out again on my way about my business again. Will you let it pierce you? Will it pierce you? Will it affect you? Will it disturb you? Thank God that this word isn't disturbing. It should be disturbing. It's not just, oh, well, let's go and hear a wee word. Thank God for that. About a cup of tea, cake. How are you doing? Catch you later. A couple of punchies. That's what the, the turkey guy did to me. <laughs> well, knuckles to knuckles, obviously. And then we're out the door. This is not a fast food shop, we just walk in. How long is that sermon going to be? I've got, I've got plans. How many ministries now are geared to a 20 minute preach? Because they say that people can't listen to any longer than 20 minutes. Mm. Hey, Norman, what you, if you're in Africa, if you don't speak for a couple of hours, man, you're, they're, they're disappointed. Mm. Well, I'm planning to speak for a couple of hours. But mm. Who knows? Glory to God. Just a couple of verses that written down here, I'm going to read out to you, for on that basis of pre preparation, I want to tell you this, you better prepare yourself, especially for these days we're moving into, and you judge, you judge if the word fits, or if it doesn't fit, hallelujah, I trust that it does, but that's, that I can't say that I'm infallible, hallelujah, glory to God, but in Jeremiah 15 and 16, it says this, Jeremiah says, your words were found and I ate them, and your word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Can you literally say that about this word? Hallelujah. This written word. That you can such a joy to be able to read this word and absorb this word when the word comes to us. Glory to God. And then there's another one up here, and let me just find where that is. Job. Now, Job had his fair share of problems. Whenever you're having a bad day, just read the book of Job and think, I feel a lot better now. I thought I was having a tough time. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But this man says this in verse 23, verse 12. It says, I have not departed from the command of your lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Jeremiah goes on and says a little bit more than that as well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need to fall in love with this word all over again. But can I actually say we need to fall in love with God all over again? Yeah. Because this word is the word, and the word is this word. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can't separate the Lord from the word, and you can't separate the word from the Lord. The word is of the Lord. It is the Lord. It is who he is. Glory to God. And you need to read it to find out who he is this day. Glory to God. So anyway, that portion of scripture there that I read to you was Haggai, if you like, second word. In chapter 1, he brings the first word. And it's a word, it's a strong word, and it's letting the people know the situation. This is why everything's happening. They were like, why is everything happening? There was a famine, and like, they, they, they were putting money in, you know, they were getting that, putting money in the holes in your pocket, it just never seemed to have enough money. There was problems, the, the land was dry, the crops were being affected, and this is what, what's going on? And then the Lord sends a prophet and says, well, this is what's going on, and this is the reason for it. Thank God that God doesn't play games with us. He just like, confronts us and says, this is what it is. Your life was out of order, man. Why do you, how do you think you can have the blessing of God when you're living in sin and your life's out of order? God says, look, put your house in order. And so I can bless you. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that God wants to bless us. But he can't bless you when your house is out of order. When you've neglected his house and you're caught up in your own house, there's a problem. Because you're putting yourself first. And God isn't going to be happy when you put yourself first. I know that's terrible, isn't it? Some people think that's terrible. It's not terrible. God's first. That's why it says anybody who loves his wife, his children, or, his, or anything other than, dog, than the Lord. Animals. Anything that you put forward before the Lord, you're not worthy of me. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He needs and he will be first. Hallelujah. 
And when you put God first, then everything else will fall into place. Glory to God. You'll love your wife more. You'll love your children more. You'll love life more. Why? Because you put God first. The Creator. He is first. Hallelujah. So glory to God. So it says here, as we began to read, in the seventh month, in the 21st day of the month, then the word of the Lord came. Hallelujah. God's word comes at just the right time. Hallelujah. I've, got, I've always felt that. His word sometimes comes at just the right time. Do you ever have to them? Oh, God, I need a word. And you're really desperate, you know. You're praying. Somebody bring a word to me. And sometimes the heavens are like grass and it's like there's a, it's a famine. And then just out of the blue, sometimes you go someplace and just a word just comes. And it hits you right between the eyes. Glory to God. In the ears. Mm -hmm. May it be an occasion for Sunday this morning. Hallelujah. Well, that actually day, according to my one of my commentaries and my old Bible, it actually says that date was the 17th of October, which is today, which spurred on this work. I've got it underlined. I went back 2005, really smashed me that word did. So, 17th of October, 520 BC. I refuse to say BCE, I say BC. Hallelujah. So, 17th of October, 520 BC, the word of the Lord comes to them, which is roughly, probably, if you want to say to today, calculations, 2,541 years later, hallelujah, that word is coming to this church. I've got down here a timeless word that still speaks. Isn't that amazing, the living word of God? It's timeless, and it will speak continuously. It's living and active every day, every moment. This word is fresh off the page. Glory to God. It's not an old word. It is a new word. It is always new. Glory to God. I pray that it will be new today. We need fresh bread and not old stale manna. Glory to God. This is the living bread. Glory to God. And we just thank the Lord. Number one there. But who remembers its house and its former glory their challenge to? How does it look to you? And actually, we were looking at a heap of rubble. Te technically, although the foundation was there. But they were still looking at a heap of rubble and the prophet and the Lord is challenging them. He says, look at this place, he says. He says, how does it look to you? Um, and how does it look to you now? It's, it's just a heap of rubble, glory to God. Who remembers this house in its former glory? Maybe there were some people there who were old enough to remember Solomon's temple. And Solomon's temple was glorious. I, I, I'd love to have seen Solomon's temple. It would have been one of the wonders of the world, one of the seven wonders. Hallelujah. Most of them have been destroyed, isn't it? But there's still a, a couple of new modern ones. Hallelujah. But that temple would have been phenomenal. Solomon's. And he says, now, he says, what does it look like to you? And I've got down off the back of that. Be careful that you don't make making comparisons. We're always making comparisons, aren't we? You know, or comparing yourself with someone else. Now, I suppose us guys are bad for it. Women are really bad for it, isn't it? No, women always. We tend to look at beautiful women and I start to feel inferior because I'm looking at these drop down dead gorgeous women. Do you know what I mean? Well, skin deep anyway. Amen. But anyway, but there's a figure that the world puts up to you and see if you don't match that figure, you're left feeling a wee bit. Doesn't that, does it not affect you? Now, I, I don't know if us guys do. Do we look at Arnold Schwarzenegger and all these muscly hulks, you know, six packers, you know what I mean? You know, and it's like, you know. And does that affect us? Well, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I think we're a wee bit more hard and skin that way. Uh, but I'm sure it does. And um, forcing a few years to go to the gym and start doing a bit of weight, you know, start to knock myself in shape, which is not a bad thing, really, at the end of the day. But glory to God. But we do, we can sometimes compare ourselves. Or you compare yourself to the church up the road and say, well, I've not got as many people as he's got. And oh, that church is far nicer than mine. And oh, they've got a great big praise team. They've got all this and all that. And I can feel inferior. Listen, see if I say that didn't affect me in times past, I'd be lying to you. Not that I was wanting a big church and all the rest of it. I said, but Lord, just give me something, you know. <laughs> you know, I always felt as if I was bereft. And people come in here and say, well, where's your praise and worship team? And I went, um, hey, where's, your, where, where's your youth work? Hey, where's your children's work? Where's the crest work? And, And then you didn't see them next Sunday because it's a short list. People want to go in there and it's a short list, you know, and it's like they want to come in and say, What can you offer me? What have you got in here that's going to entice me to come here? Rather than if they had the call of God to come here, we could build something off the back of them. But everybody wants to go to the big church, you know, we all because there's more women over there than there are all. And there's more guys over there. Oh, I love that music and I love that sound. And the reason is then that they're actually it's the fleshly things that are actually mm -hmm. attracting them to go someplace rather than hearing the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When God speaks to you, you hear God's voice and you know where you should be, then just be there. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Then went down roots and then say, listen, what can I do here? I've got some skills. Hallelujah. And that's the way the Lord works. So glory to God. And so be careful. Do not compare ourselves with someone else. Glory to God. It says, so how does it seem to you in your own eyes? Amen. Well, oh, guys, how do we look at How do we see something? And they had a good look at How does it look in your own eyes? And I was reminded of that scripture in Job again. In Job 31 verse 1, Job says, I have made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a woman. Amen? That's what he says. Now that could be many things. That could be lustfully looking at anything. You know, those big cars in the garage. <laughs> that big mega screen TV. Covenant. He says, I made a covenant with my eyes that I'd be careful what I look at. How do I look at them? No problem looking at a beautiful woman and saying, no, she's beautiful, that's not a problem. I wonder you wouldn't have a problem with that, would you? See, she my head. <laughs> the difference is then when I start lust, looking at a different way. There's two ways you can look at. You can look at a woman, man, she's really beautiful, she's gorgeous. Uh-huh. Praise God. Yeah. But there's another look, uh, they call it the dirty look, and sometimes you ever been in the presence of somebody that's a kind of leering, this, you know, and then you just feel as if, you know, you just don't like the way they're looking at you, do you know what I mean? Mm. And then... Um, not those guys that you worry about these things. No. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Let's continue. Glory to God. We can take a leaf out of his book as well. Then what does he say to them? Again, when the Lord's going to ask you to do something, be strong, be courageous. Mm. Our Emma was strong and courageous yeah. yesterday. Well, she was putting it on a good front anyway, you know. I'm, I'm waiting for her bottle to crash, you know, before she... <laughs> You <laughs> put these shackles on them. They've got to jump like that into the cage, you know. But no, she was cool as a cucumber. Hallelujah. But again, the Lord is encouraging them there. Be strong and be courageous. Is that not the same thing he tells Joshua, wasn't it? When Joshua was commissioned to give now and take over from Moses. Now you're taking over from Moses. Imagine comparing yourself to Moses, even Joshua. I mean, the fright that, you know, it's like, this is... This is my call now, you know, and the Lord's now saying, right, you're the man, now you. Moses is now gone. Joshua, it's your turn. Now you take these people in. Well, I want to tell you this, that would have been very, very daunting. And certainly with them, so everyone has been daunting trying to fill Moses' shoes. Hallelujah. But it was anointing of God, and God's now saying, be strong mm-hmm. and be courageous. Glory to God. And that's a word for us as well. We need to be strong and courageous today. We need to be a strong and courageous people. And I believe the Lord will say that to us. Never before we need to be strong and be courageous. Hallelujah. It's interesting that he says that, if you like, to Joshua three times. Be strong, be courageous, be strong, be very courageous, be strong. says it in chapter 1 of Joshua. Three times he speaks that word. It's interesting here in chapter 2, albeit see different groups, but he says be strong, be courageous, three times. Whenever God says something three times, you yeah. better take notice of it. And you'll find a few places in the scripture where the Lord will actually speak something three times. Hallelujah. He speaks to Zerubbabel, who was of the king, was the line of David. He could have been a king, but he wasn't allowed to be a king. He was a governor. So he was representing that kind of political, that kind of, the kingly side. Joshua, then he's, he, the, the word of God, be strong, courageous, represents the priesthood. He was a high priest. And he represented the priesthood and the remnant. Be strong and be courageous. Glory to God. And when people ask me after what denomination you belong to, the remnant. That's who I belong to. The remnant. Hallelujah. And they are scattered throughout the land. Whether it's different churches or whether it's individuals within churches. God has always had his remnant. And Scotland has got its remnant as well. Hallelujah. So three times again it is spoken. And then it says, and work. Now that's a good word, isn't it? And work. Mm. You know, we're living in a nation just now that, you know, that it's like we've lost that attitude of work. Mm. And I don't want to be unkind with people. You can't get a job, you can't work. I just want to say, though, that eh, that good old fashioned, with the sweat of your brow, you know, to get up there and to work. It's good to work. Mm-hmm. I remember a time in my life that I didn't work and I was just like, it was just, you know, my way back in those days, you know, I was living under a cloud of smoke and all that kind of business. Hallelujah. And um, but thank God now, you know, my mother used to shout up the stairs and everybody trying to get me out of bed. She never got me out of bed. I had lost them teen jobs. Now I'm up with the birds, hallelujah. In fact, I'm up with four of the birds. Glory to God. I wake him up, hallelujah, my prayers, and they start singing. Glory to God. But in work, 
1 Chronicles 28 10 says this David now is speaking to his son Solomon, and the book now has been passed to Solomon. You always say for, for to build the temple. And he says this Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build the house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Hallelujah. Be strong and work. Do the work. Be strong. Hallelujah. David's commission to his son Solomon. Glory to God. I've got down here actions speak louder than words, yeah. or as James the Apostle would say, that's also faith by itself. If it does not have words, it is dead. Amen. God expects us to work. Brother, you don't work your way to heaven. It's by grace, it's free. You just need to get saved. Sing your backside. Then come to church. Sing, sing, sing. Put a few money, put some quids into the book, and you'll be blessed in heaven. Hallelujah. Mm, yeah. What a lie. No, God expects us to work. Yes, God saved us by grace. You can't work your way into salvation. Glory to God. It's by grace. It's by the divine favour and mercy of God that's been given unto thee. But then God expects you to do something once you're saved. Hallelujah. You can't work to get your salvation. But once you've got your salvation, you need to start to work now for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So there's a work for us to do. as yes, there is a work for these people here to do. Glory to God. Finding myself spitting now. Oh, yeah. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Must mean I'm getting excited. As I said, you know, because sometimes you come in and in their case, they were going to be having to rebuild the temple. There's a lot of rubble there. There's a lot of manual work. There's a lot of physical work that is going to be required. And we have not necessarily got that work going on here just now. We did have in the past, this was an empty building. This was, this, there was a huge amount of work going on in here one time probably two and a half years worth, probably more, but we'll say I concentrated two and a half years when my life was kind of caught up in this place. Glory to God, I believe it was a divine call. I believe it was the Lord that placed it in our laps and then it was like, roll up your sleeves and start working. And I believe my wife will bear me up in this and she couldn't say I wasn't working because she never seen me. I felt as if she was going to divorce me. It's like, I was here all the time. Because somebody had to be here with a key to the door open so if anybody turned up, we could be getting about the business of the Lord. And thank God there was a wee, a wee remnant, Polly, that were willing to stick in there and to see the place built for the glory of God. So hallelujah. So how do we labor? How do you work? Some people say, oh, what does that mean? Well, what about coming to a prayer meeting and spell 20 hours in prayer meeting? That's work. Spiritual work. That is spiritual work. Prayer. Mm -hmm. Spiritual work. Prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's how you work. You come before the Lord and you start offering up your prayers with your brothers and sisters. That's work. Spiritual work. It's a spiritual work of prayer. And then you can look at there and then we're going to be up in Glasgow maybe over the next couple of days doing a bit of evangelism. Well, that could be physical work. Out there in the streets, out of your comfort zone, having to get up to speak to people and many of them will probably give you a, shall we say, a leave me alone in colourful language. Or others will receive it. Glory to God. So evangelism could be a physical sense we could still say the spiritual work. So there's many things we could actually do. You know, and if you really wanted work, then come and speak to me. I'll give you work. Hallelujah. Physical work. Spiritual work. Glory to God. Amen. So that says, for then he encourages them. Now he says, now do the work. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I could probably put in, who was it allowed you? I could put in Emma there to get upon herself to what? To go and organise a bungee jump. Put a lot of time and effort getting all the sponsors, all the rest of it. And raised over two thousand pounds for a good cause, raised a poll, which is a good cause. Could have probably done many good causes, but it's a cancer support group that's helping a lot of people. Hallelujah. And it needs money to just to pay his bills and to survive and to put on what it what it need to put on. We've got one part time worker there just now with salary, great last. All that needs to be paid for as we bring reach out there, hallelujah. So I suppose we could all do the good works if we really wanted to do do something and give the work to charity. So there's something that we can do if we really just want to step out the boat. And I've thrown that out there to us. Find yourself something to do and then do it. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. And I love this bit it says here, For I am with you. My spirit remains among you, therefore do not fear. Now he encourages them. For I am with you. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Do you know how wonderful it is to know that God is with you? Mm. Even the three times of dryness and maybe somebody <laughs> brings a word to you and says, God says, I'm with you. And sometimes you need to hear that. Sometimes you know, it's not always like glaringly obvious that God is with you. 
Some things just to know a lot more. You just, you just feel as if, God, you're really with me. You, you ever get through those dry seasons? I've got two hands up. When you're going through all the motions, you just feel as if God's a million miles away from you. And it's like you're praying, you're seeking the Lord. And, it's, and then you start to feel, and then just sometimes you hear the words just in the Lord saying, I'm with you. And it's like, mm. oh, it just reminds you. It's like a glass of water when you're really, really, really mm. thirsty. We need to know that the Lord is with them. They needed to know that the Lord was with them. And my, and, and, my, and, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. If God is for us, who can be against us? Why are we filled with fear and destruction and doubt? If I know that God is with me, glory to God. Hey, that mountain, get you out of my way. I'm coming through. Hallelujah. Hey, you, Goliath. Who the heck do you think you are? I think you're out of my language. I was only going to say hell anyway. But anyway, who the heck do you think you are? My God's going to give you into my hands. Hallelujah. When you know the Spirit of God is with you, I want to tell you this. You walk taller. You walk where you stride. We're not going about just like we. How many times did you see us? We're all going about as if we're second class citizens. We are first class citizens. Why? Because God has put his spirit within us and God has saved mm. us. Okay? This world belongs to us. These, these highlands out there who think they'll control the world and are doing everything possible to, to dictate to it. Their days are history, my friends. Their days are already written in the book. Their, their day is coming to a close. We are going to take the rulership of this world. God has planned that for us. We are going to rule this world under the great King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. There's a glorious future ahead for all of us when we seek the Lord. So we need to know sometimes that God is with us. Then he gives them the instructions because God's going to watch shake heaven and earth and all the nations. Glory to God. Maybe that's happening just now, isn't it? We can see this shaking going on just now. God is going to, in these last days, going to shake the heavens and the earth. These powerful forces of darkness are being shaken as we speak. Mm. I would love to have my eyes opened up in the realm of the Spirit just to see the war that is taking place in the heavenlies just now. There's a massive war taking place and Satan will be thrust out of the heavenlies if he's not already been thrust out. I think that war is still taking place, but already he could have been thrust out in that heavenlies. He'll be cast down upon this earth. So there's a great war. Michael and the angels of God are warring just now. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And therefore our prayers are powerful. Hallelujah. Our prayers are powerful. Know that when we're praying, all oh, hell is breaking loose in the heavenlies. Glory to God. His days are numbered indeed. So we can see all of these things. And it says, and all the nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. You know that Jesus is the desire of all the nations. He is a desired one. Jesus himself is a desire of all nations. He is the one that's going to come to this world and bring peace, the shalom, that will go from sea to sea and mountain to mountain. He is the one that we all want to come and bring order, God's order, back into this world. And if only the world would realise that we all got in our face, what a wonderful world it could be, as the song goes. But we need the Son of God to come. We need to embrace the Son of God. Let the Son of God's order come to this world. And guess what? One day it's coming. Amen. I mean to pray, come Lord Jesus, hallelujah, come to Scotland and bring your order again to this nation. This nation used to be under the order of God, hallelujah, and we need to fight in the realm of the Spirit to see that order coming back, glory to God. So we can see here, it says, now fill this temple with glory. Well, that's a desire for you, so just in here, if anybody says, what's your vision statement, what's your, what's your mission now? statement, hey listen, to see the glory of God here in this church, Eastgate Church. And from here spill out and affect the nation. That's what this is what this is what we're about. To see God's glory in this building. Hallelujah. And to see it then being pushed out of this building that's going to seep through and touch the nation of Scotland. I never said England. Excuse me, my brethren. I love the English. We've got a lot of really good English people in here. Emma's one of them, and we love up to bits. And mm -hmm. Charles and Sue, and we've got some other English brethren. I, I, I voted to stay part of the union. I'm just letting you, letting you know. Well. <laughs> I believe, and you know, I believe it was the plans and purposes of God. Put it this way: I'd rather be part of Britain than part of Europe. Amen. You make up your own mind who you want to be part of. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! I've been part of all of them, I suppose. And another neck of the woods, but there we go. But glory to God! Hallelujah! I want to see God's glory born. and it says, I will fill this temple with my glory. That's why it got me excited when I read these things, because it's deep within my heart and soul. The some of the gold and the cattle and the thousand hills belong to me. And I added the cattle and the thousand hills. Brought that in from another scripture, didn't I? Listen, God knows everything in this world. And maybe they felt they'd lack of resources to be able to build the temple and they were struggling with this and that. Listen, when God commissions you to do something, he will give you the needs. 
Mm-hmm. See, when we were trusting God for this building, now I was in the building industry. I, I walked in here all those years ago, man, it was a bomb site. <laughs> I knew this place was going to cost hundreds of thousands to put right, literally hundreds of thousands. They brought every place it was, I thought, and we were all a wee group of people, seven of us, we first started the church. It was there six of us and then seven the following week? Hallelujah. And we had a couple of kids, we were lucky if 40 quid came in on, on a plate that any given week. Hallelujah. I gave up my work some time ago to pursue the ministry. Sent this lovely lady out, well, she volunteered to go and earn a crust, you know. It turned out she was earning more than I was in business, George. She wasn't very clever. But anyway, glory to God. I should have sent her out ages before that, actually. It would have been doing good to do is bring in the income, but glory to God. And I was like, and I walked in here and I thought to myself, this place is going to cut this. If I'd have looked and thought, we've not got the resources to do this. If I started to think rationally, then, you know, I would have been like, forget it, you know. It would have been, do you know, another church came down and looked at this building a couple of years before we did. They're actually closed now, but do you know they walked down? I wouldn't even mention the man's name, but if I did, you would know him. And he walked in here and went, oh! <laughs> Too much work! We've not got the resources, and I'll tell you this, there are a lot more resources for me. They were quite about the church at one point, but I just thought, nah. Well, why? Because God was keeping it for us. Amen. 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 For somebody stupid enough just to walk in and go and say, well, look, you know what I says? I believe God was able, was going to give us this building for nothing. We, we did end up a bit in a tenor, but a tenor in light of office of a 35 grand, I believe, is nothing. And then, do you know what my faith was? Well, if God's able to give you a building for nothing, then God will give you the, the resources to do it all. Yeah. Simple faith. Hallelujah. Yeah. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. He works in ways we do not see. He will make a way for me. Glory to God. Pray to God as soon as we open. So hallelujah. So we see these things here. Time and doing fine. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then he's on to say, he says this. The glory of the latter temple shall be greater than the former. Hallelujah. Isn't that it? It was, it was, going, to, it was going to be, if you like, inferior to the former glory of Solomon's or David's temple. But God says the glory of the latter temple is going to be greater than the former. Now, a lot of people believe that and they think that's going to be the end time church. The glory of the end time church is going to be far greater than the, the first church. Mm-hmm. Bring it on. <laughs> if that's the case, I don't technically... Uh, listen, see, we could only be a tenth as good as the early church. Wow, wouldn't it be a wonderful church indeed? If we could only just be a tenth of how, how much God had poured his spirit out in those early days. I believe he was actually speaking about the latter temple. The Lord Jesus Christ himself was going to walk into that temple. Mm. Hallelujah. That second temple, the glory of God was going to walk into it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. But anyway... We encourage ourselves with these things and we do look to see that, that God is going to do something amazing. I believe it. Personally, I believe that God is not going to let us go out here like a flailing church struggling just to survive. That he didn't come and rescue us, but we're all doomed. God has got something powerful in store for the last church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that's what I believe anyway. So let me now just come. So, amen. Bring your glory, Lord. Let's just go now to read a couple more verses. Bear with me. I need to get to the end of these notes. I don't care, I need to get to the end of them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Trust you're being blessed along the way. So let's just read down 10 to 14 a little bit. On the 24th day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Haggai the prophet, saying, His second, he stopped what now? Isn't it? Thus says the Lord of hosts, Now ask the priest concerning the law, saying, If one, if one carries holy meat, in the fold of his garment, and with every touch of bread or stew, wine or oil or food, will it become holy? Then the priest answers, no, and said no. And Haggai says, if one who is unclean because of a dead body touches any of these things, will it be unclean? So the priest answers and says, yes, it shall be unclean. Then Haggai answered and said, so is this people and so is this nation before me, says the Lord. And so is every work of their hands, and what they offer up here is unclean. Glory to God. Mm. Glory to God. This is his third word. And this according to my commentary I read, was the 18th of December, 520 BC. So now that word now is coming now in the 18th of December. I'm focused on the 18th of December, by the way. I'm just focusing. It's good to have a focus, isn't it? It's good to have something to look at and to, to really pray into. So I'm praying into the 18th of the December. Thank God it was the 25th of December. I don't do Christmas very good. Yeah. <laughs> 
Holiness is not contagious. What this is saying here, holiness is not contagious. Glory to God. Holy things will not make you holy. Holy water or holy cloths. They ain't going to make you holy. Yeah, I'm sure a holy, I'm sure a cloth, it could be a prayer cloth, could be taken to someone and placed upon them and could bring healing to them. Hallelujah, we see examples of it. But I'll tell you this: you can you can have a shower under holy water, it's not going to make you any holier. Amen. Holiness is not contagious. Glory to God. But sinfulness and wickedness is contagious. Therefore, you better be careful who you rub shoulders with in this world. Wickedness and sinfulness is contagious. Be careful. That is contagious. That's why the Bible says when, that, when you're restoring a brother, be careful, lest his sin you get contaminated with that sin. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. But holiness is not contagious. It doesn't rub off. It can inspire you and encourage you, but it's not contagious. It's something you have to get before the Lord and to seek him. Holiness and righteousness is the two pillars that I believe Eastgate Church have always strived to have in this church. Holiness. Without holiness, no one will see God. Anybody want to see the Lord? Hallelujah. Yes. Then I want to tell you this then. If you're not holy, you ain't seen him. And that doesn't mean you say perfection. It just means there has to be a part within you that's really striving to live a good life, a holy life before the Lord according to his word. And I'm sure all of us um, can probably feel inadequate, depending on how hard you look at yourself. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 says this, Therefore come out from among them and be separate. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Separate ourselves. You know, we were called to be a separated people. The biggest problem we've got in the church now is we're not. We've been infiltrated by the world. And basically, mm -hmm. if we give ourselves license, we love the world to an extent. Hallelujah. <coughs> There's a point where the world has come in and it's gripped us and it's caught us in its web. And we need to break out that. There the church says, separate yourself from the world. When the Lord called the people out of Egypt, they were called to be a separated people. They were to be a people that kept themselves separated. Don't intermarry with the heathen. Keep yourself pure. Keep the seed pure. Keep your holiness. Glory to God. I could say a lot more about that. There. Therefore, we need to be what this illustration is then saying. So is a whole lot of you because you were corrupted because of their disobedience. Their disobedience brought the curse of God upon them. They were disobedient. You know why? Because they neglected God's house. They, they were so caught up in their own lives and their own houses that they neglected God's house. God says, my house lies in a bunch of rubble and is a ruin. And he's all caught up in your own houses. Nobody's concerned about my house. Hallelujah. Their disobedience brought a curse. They had neglected God's house. They were still offering up their sacrifices, but in amongst the rubble. How does Scotland look to us? Is it just me? How does Scotland look to us? Churches lying all over the place, empty, rubble, ruins. Testimonies to the same to say the church is dead. The church means nothing in this land. Our buildings are lying once filled with people. Worship was risen up to the very heavens, and now Scotland lies in ruins. There's a rubble across our land, brothers and sisters. And let's not kid ourselves on and think, wow, aren't we doing good? We are in a bad place. And I want to tell you this, we are not experiencing the blessing of God. Now there could be individual blessings, please hear me, I'm sure maybe you're receiving blessings in your life, and we could be. But on the whole, I do, don't believe you're seeing the blessing of God in this land. Hallelujah. We're not. Because of our neglect to the house of the Lord, he should be my first concern. Hallelujah. For anybody that's naming Christ as Lord and Saviour. But let me finish on the high. I want to leave his on that part of it. But God just calls it out. Thank God call, God calls us out. Mm -hmm. I thank God God's called me out many times in my life. Glory to God. But he calls me out so that I can put things right. Mm -hmm. Now, we read on just with these other verses, which I will read as we finish. Verse 15. And now carefully consider from this day forward, from before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord, since those days when one came to a heap of 20 ephahs, there was only 10. And when one came to a wine vat to draw out 50 baths from the press, there was but 20. I struck you with, listen, this is the word of the Lord to come through the prophet. I struck you with blight and mildew and hail in the labors of your hands, yet you did not turn to me, says the Lord. Sometimes God disciplines in us to get us to turn from what we're doing. And he brings difficult times into our lives and we feel, we feel, oh, I feel as if the Lord has left me. Well, 
That's going to be a key to think, is there something going on in my life that I need to put right? Consider now from this day forward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, which is the 18th of December, from this day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is there seed still in the barn? As yet the fine, the fig tree, the pomegranate and the olive tree have not yielded fruit. But from this day on, I am going to bless you. The blessing of the Lord was coming now to this people. Why? Because now they rolled their sleeves up and they said, right, we're going to be busy now. We're going to build the temple of the Lord, which meant to build up the rest of Jerusalem as well. Now they had set themselves a task. And because their obedience now is going to bring blessing. Do you know, the blessing of God will depend on your obedience or your disobedience. Disobedience will bring a curse upon us. Obedience will bring the blessing upon us. Read Deuteronomy 28. Hallelujah. It talks about blessings for obedience and it talks about curses for disobedience. Hallelujah. We like to, I'll just read that in the Old Testament. We have the New Testament, bro. Hallelujah. Amazing grace. Glory to God. God just loves us now. He doesn't care what you do. He just loves you. He just loves you. You're just so, oh, you're just so special to him. Hallelujah. And he wants you to be so blessed. No, he does want you to be blessed, but that brings with obedience. I've been walking in obedience and I ask myself that there as well. From this day forward, this is, I am going to bless you. I was super excited when I read that word some time ago. Because I want God's blessing upon my life. I want it. I want the blessing of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I love it when we owe him was in here. Linda visited me. He was in here preparing the word yesterday. And, you know, he, he, when he's got hold of a wee car, he rolls this car. I just can't want sometimes like that to come out. I've got it. I've got it. And he's running all over this building, getting very upset, chasing Papa to get his car. But I'm going, I've got it. I've got it. Mm -hmm. And you know what he does? See, when he gets it, he runs away and he goes, I've got it. I've got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I find myself using his language. <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing if you can take hold of God and I've got it. I've got it, I ain't letting it go. Jacob, let me go. No, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Hallelujah. I want the blessing of God. Hallelujah. I want it. By golly, I'm going to get it or I'm going to die trying. Hallelujah. One of the two. And if I don't get it, at least I'll die trying to get it because you know why? That is the greatest treasure that's ever there. Everything else is a, everything else is just a sidetracking you. Everything else is just it's just going to be, you know, smoke screens. No, I want to see the glory of God in this nation. Hallelujah. I want the blessing of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I am prepared to do something about it to get there. So it gets me up out of my bed in the morning. Because I want the blessing of God. Amen. Glorious blessing of God. Obedience will bring blessing. And he says, this day I'm going to bless you. And guys, I'm not talking about, and I am talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. And the power of the Spirit. The blessing of God is not only the, the fruit of the Spirit and the power of the Spirit. This is what we desire. Amen. Because you can't have the power without the fruit. Can I say that again? Everybody wants the power of the Spirit. Oh, we want to move in the power of the Spirit. You will not have the power of the Spirit without the fruit of the Spirit. That means your life, my friend, better line up. Because think God's going to think God's going to pour out His Spirit in some a vessel that is deliberately unclean. Now, listen, I don't please hear me in that. None of us are going to be perfect. But I tell you this: if you want the blessing of God upon your life, you better clean your act up. You better get your house in order. Hallelujah! And be busy about His house, His concerns. Glory to God. Summary, and I've come to the end of this now. Hear me today: Is God going to do a work here in Scotland? Question mark. Is God? Let's forget about the world, guys. That's that's God. let God to carry the big picture, okay? Amen. Is God want to do a work here in Scotland? Yes. Is he? Is God want to do a work here in Eastgate? Yes. Is God want to do a work here in Eastgate? Yes. Is God want to do a work in me? And you can put me, your name in me. Mm -hmm. Is God want to do a work in me? <laughs> Are we a group of people that God has called together for such a time as this? Because it's time. Yes. Yes. Listen to me. Every time you see when God wants to do a work, he prepares a group of people because he wants mm. to do something and he's preparing a group of people. This is what I feel within myself, rightly or wrongly. But I believe 
that God has brought us together for such a time as this because God wants to see his glory here in the land of Scotland and he set our people apart, he sent people apart. Listen, we're not just, oh, it's just us and there's nobody else. I'm only, I can only speak of myself. I don't, I'm, all, I'm up there in Aberdeen or across in Dundee or way up there in the island of Lewis. I'm here at this moment in time and I'm believing that, I, I believe that God wants to do something and it's time. So it was a perfect time for Haggai to go up and speak. Haggai was there from the very beginning with Zerubbabel, but he never spoke until about 15, 16 years later. Then he rose up and he started to speak. And then all of a sudden everybody heard the word of God because they feared God. And they said, right, right, we repent, Lord, of our slothfulness. And they all rolled their sleeves up and said, okay, it's time to build, hallelujah, it's time to get on with the work of God. And then the Lord says, now, from this day forward, I'm going to bless you. Glory to God. Mm-hmm. And I believe God, I want to see the blessing of God again in this nation. I've not got it, guys. There's a famine in the land. I can, listen, I'll put my hand up and say there's a famine in me. Listen, do you know, is it just me that feels powerless? I don't know about you, I'm feeling powerless. I get there and speak to people and it's like, I have to be in prayer of face or whatever. Yeah. I'm praying for people I'm not seeing. I'm not, I'm not chasing miracles, but it'd be good to see miracles. Amen. Yes. It would be good to see a few demons being cast out of one person or two over the course of time. Yes. Or do you think, well, the demons have left now? They don't, they're no longer on the earth. We need to see the power of God again in our land, brothers yes. and sisters. And God is busy doing something. He's looking for a people who will be involved, will be busy mm. working and building the temple. God is building something new. God is doing a new thing in the land of Scotland. Yeah. He's doing a new thing. Hallelujah. I know he's doing a new thing. I'm excited about this new thing. Hallelujah. But God is busy doing something. Can I encourage you this morning? If you read the whole book of Haggai, it's only two chapters. Meditate upon it. Look at it. Read it. Ask God to speak to you through this word. I've only just found some little bits and pieces there this morning that I trust is going to bless you. Let's just finish with a word of prayer. Father, thank you this day, Lord. And Father, I thank you, my God, that you... you Father, your word is there to encourage us. And sometimes, Lord, you've heard me saying, guys, sometimes it, you need to be discouraged to be encouraged. Mm-hmm. Means to be discouraged where you are to encourage you to get to go someplace else. So sometimes, Lord, your word will discourage us and where we find ourselves, but Lord, it's actually meant to encourage us to take us to someplace else, Father. Lord, I just pray today that you will discourage, Lord, everybody that's maybe sitting, caught up in their own house, and Lord, they've neglected your house. I pray, discourage them. And Father, then encourage them, Lord, to be, Father, busy about the Master's work and about the Lord's yeah. house, I pray this day, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. May your blessing be with your people. I thank you for every single person that's here today. For those who's not here, they might listen later on, I pray, bless them, Father. Encourage them and inspire them for the glory of God, I ask. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Just as I finish, if anybody wants to have a word with me, you maybe feel that maybe you're maybe making a, a commitment to the Lord, you've never made a commitment to the Lord, then you speak to me at the end. Hallelujah. I'll be here and um, I'll be very happy to pray with you. Other than that, um, we'll go through, we can have a time of fellowship, encourage each other and be a blessing to one another. In the precious name of Jesus, over tea and some fellowship. Amen. Amen. And amen.